Good day. Welcome to King Wills Everything. Today, I want to take a look at Amiga piracy. Uh, back in the day, if you had an Amiga, you probably did a little pirating. And you kind of see, you got a bunch of these boxes. I'll show you just a few. Uh, lots and lots of pirated games. And they've kind of made it easy. Somewhere bought. Uh, let's see. There's mouse track. Let's see. I think there's some purchased ones in here. These look like a lot of games. I think this looks like it's just a box of. Oh, here's something. Box of pirated games. And I do believe, without a doubt, this kind of helped uh, kind of put the Amiga in the grave a little earlier than it should have because everybody I know pirated games. Lots of games. And that's just the way it was. You know, I figure if you were a kid and you had Amiga, you probably paid a lot of money and buy a game. Uh, and games aren't cheap. So you paid a lot of bucks. But if you bought a game, you know, say like Ultima, you want to buy because you got the maps, the books, uh, and you kind of needed that stuff. Or if I had some really fancy uh, copy protection. But for the most part, everybody I know, they had these boxes. And that's kind of where what these came from. I'll show you another one here. These are all nice and dirty. Oops. Let's get this other one here. Here's another one. See, it's just jam-packed. Okay, so this one looks like it's got a lot of a lot of bot games. But a lot of these, I think, were fairly cheap. Alien Syndrome, Afterburn, Keyboard Cadet, Outrun, Shinobi. Uh, here's the plague. These uh, sort of Sodan. These are actually these. You know, it's got a got a company name on it. But uh, and then you got a lot of the ones you can just buy, like Dynamic Cat. Here's Unreal. Let's see, is there any more? Uh, got a lot of these workbench discs. You can buy these. See this at uh, Commodore 64 emulator for the, the um, Amiga. A lot of cool stuff like that. And it looks like it's mostly pirated stuff. But I'm going to show you why uh, a lot of people pirated because it became so simple. And if you bought any of those, uh, uh, you know, computer shop readers and stuff like that, some of the media magazines, you would see in the back. And I found this in my Commodore stash. I wish I wouldn't have put the stickers all over this Commodore um, uh, folder. But, let's see, where's it at? It's in here. I know I saw it in here. Oh, here it is. You would see something like this. Let me zoom you in. Let me zoom you in. So you can see this one's called uh, Discs and Docks, P.O. Box 189, La Crosse, Wisconsin, Amiga Catalog. And this was from 2002, so it's kind of later in the, uh, the Amiga life. All right, 92. But you can kind of see what it says here. I'll let you kind of look at it here. Uh, archival purposes only. We're providing a backup service only for software manuals uh, or anything. It's agreed that, so that you do uh, the original and are only requesting a backup of your original. Any other use is expressly forbidden. And it kind of goes on to tell you kind of what uh, the disc type, how many types of game, uh, the disc number. It's got a manual, original manual, you get a copy of, or a text file of the manual. And you can kind of see here, it tells you what the, uh, like if it's business, cooking, copy, data. And you can get a lot of neat stuff from here. But like you said, it's probably most people that did this, it was piracy. Uh, see here, you could order five or more, you get some discounts and stuff like that. That's pretty cool. But as you open it up and look a little closer at what you got here, uh, new customer referral. Uh-oh. Here's where it starts getting a little sketchy. It's kind of hard to read it all, but here you go, like Afterburner Sega, one game. Here's the number, and there's no manuals. Hmm. And what does one disc cost? Let's see, I thought there was a price guide in here somewhere. There's prices. $4 per one to 15 discs. Uh, 16 or more, $3 per disc. So you would pay $4 for Sega Afterburner. And so this game here, Aegis Sonics, two discs. Looks like it's music. It's got a manual for 20 bucks. Uh, let's see, oh, page. Oh, it's got four discs. So, you know, that would be 16 bucks. And let's see. Let's just for more fun. Let's just randomly pick a page here. Here we go. Let's see. 
do, 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 let's see here. Let's see. I'm trying to find a neat game for you guys. Let's go. Okay, here we go. Fast Eddie Pool. Uh, it's broken by Skid Row. It's one. And so it's one disc. It's a game. There's a disc number, and it makes one meg of RAM. And there's no manuals, so you figure you're going to pay $16 or $4 for Fast Eddie Pool. So you kind of see the, the lure of going through this guy <clears throat> and kind of wonder how the FBI didn't say, hey, uh, you know, this uh, backup service you're doing here is maybe illegal. And I know they do put the disclaimer in here. Oh, it's just a backup service. But you think, how many people are going, you know what, I need a backup of my Whatchamajiggy game for four bucks. Uh, most people I know that found this catalog, um, and this was like all mail. This was pre-internet. There were some BBS. You probably, I don't know. It was probably this was like pre-internet. It was all BBS stuff if it was out there. But you know, you got this catalog in the mail, and you did mail order, and you ordered whatever you wanted, and that's where a lot of the stuff would come from. I don't think I have any of these discs that I know of. And so here's the uh, order form. So you want to order some discs from these fellows. But that was kind of like one of the ways people got pirates. Other other ways. Uh, you know, you got the copiers and stuff like that, and, and somebody had an original, you copied it, and especially if it was heavily protected. A lot of the Amiga games, they, they were pretty good on the copy protection, so it was kind of hard to copy it. But it was doable, and you can see just from this fellow here, he's got uh, many, many, many games. So, like I said, I just thought that was kind of interesting. I kind of remember this back in the day. I don't remember a lot of people buying games. I know I bought, um, like, Ultima. I saw some of these games in here. I think I had bought Sword of Sodan. Uh, different different games so i did buy stuff oh i think i bought um uh i'm trying to think the name of it a lot of like the questron and ultimas because that was, was kind of my thing in the day but anyway i thought that was kind of kind of interesting and like i said it was kind of kind of leads me to think back it's like man look at all the people that were pirating that i know i don't think too many people bought a game if you did you bought maybe one or two games and 99 percent of the other ones you bought were either copies or you know you you backed them up so, anyway, I thought you guys would find that interesting, kind of a little bit of Amiga history, and a little, maybe a little knowledge of why, like the Atari ST, uh, the Amigas, and stuff like that, uh, heavily pirated, and kind of be nice that those things were still around today, that uh, probably if we didn't do a lot of pirating, we'd still have those bad boys here in our lives. We still have the originals, but new ones, long gone. So, anyway, have a great day.